Okay? I'm going to read you a poem this morning to start the sermon. It's written by Philip Larkin. It's called Church Going. And what I want you to figure out as I read this poem is what Philip Larkin means by church going. Okay? I print it up here so you can follow me. It's a little lengthy, but it's one of my favorite poems, and you'll just have to deal with it because I am an English major. <laughs> okay. Once I am sure that nothing is going on, I step inside, letting the door thud shut. Another church, matting, seats, stone, and little books, sprawlings of cut, or flowers cut. For Sunday, brownish now. Some brass and stuff up at the Holy End. The small, neat organ. And a tense, musty, unignorable silence. Brood God knows how long. Hatless, I take off my cycle clips in awkward reverence. Move forward, run my hand around the font. That's the baptismal font. From where I stand, the roof looks almost new. Clean or restored? Someone would know I don't. Mounting the lectern, I peruse a few hectoring, large-scale verses and pronounce here ended, much more loudly than I admit. The echoes snitter briefly back at the door. I sign the book, donate an Irish sixpence, but you have to understand she's in England, so an Irish sixpence is worth nothing. Okay? Reflect the place was not worth stopping for. Yet stop I did. In fact, I often do, and always in much at a loss like this, wondering what to look for, wondering, too, when churches will fall completely out of use, what we shall turn them into. If we shall keep a few cathedrals chronically on show, their parchment plate in pits and lock cases, and let the rest break free to rain and sheep. Shall we avoid them as unlucky places? Or after dark will dubious women come to make their children touch a particular stone, pick symbols for a cancer, or on some advice at night see walking a dead one? Power of some sort will go on in games and riddles seemingly at random, but superstitious like belief must die. And what remains when disbelief is gone? Grass, weedy pavement, brambles, buttress sky, a shape less recognizable each week, a purpose more obscure. This is the line I want you to hear. I wonder who will be the last, the very last, to seek this place for what it was. One of the crew that tap and chop and know the rude sloths were. Some ruined bibber, brandy for antique, or Christmas ad and counting on a whiff of gown and bands and organ pipe and myrrh? Or will he be my representative, bored, uninformed, knowing the ghostly suit, dispersed yet tending to this cross of ground, through suburb shrub, because hell upsplit, unsplit, so long and equably what sense is found only in separation, marriage, and birth, and death, and thoughts of these for which was built this special shell. For though I've no idea what this accustomed frosty barn is worth, it pleases me to stand in silence. A serious house on serious earth it is, in whose blinked air all compulsions meet, are recognized and robed as destiny. And that much will never be obsolete, since someone will forever be surprising a hunger in himself to be more serious, and gravitating with it to this ground, which he once heard was proper to grow wise in, if only that so many did lie around. Philip Larkin does not have a high opinion of the church, does he? But he's walked into a church where nothing happens. He's walked into a church where he can smell the must of the church being closed up. You can tell that nothing is happening in the church 
because the flowers from the previous Sunday are sitting there and the petals, well, those are still in good shape. These were not. These petals were falling off onto the ground. There was nothing going on. Now, what do you think he means by church and going? It's more than just he went to the church. He's talking about a church that's dying. A church that's going. Do you hear him now? I wonder who will be the last, the very last, to come to this place. We know that in the United Methodist Church. We know in our churches that have closed who are the last the very last to attend those churches that couldn't make it in this place. I think we need to be a church that's going. A church where something's going on. Amen? Amen. A church that when you walk into it, you don't smell the must and the mold and the dampness of a church that's dying. We need to come in and smell a church that fresh air has blown through. That the Holy Spirit is filled and a mighty wind has touched the congregation. Not a church that's going, but a church where something's going on. Where the congregation doesn't get splinters in the pews because they don't spend time there. They are not the church that attends church, but they are the people who are the church. All the scriptures this morning plead with us to be the church. All of the scriptures say this morning, yes, go to the house of God. Go to the house of God to experience God. Go to the house of God to learn. But nowhere does it say go to the house and just sit there and do nothing else. We come to the house of God and we learn. We come to the house of God to experience God. We come to the house of God to be filled with the Holy Spirit so that we can go from here and be the church. Amen? Our ministries in this church are outreach ministries. They're meant to go out into the community and touch the lives of the people who live in the houses that don't necessarily attend here. I guarantee you there are far more people who call me Pastor Gary than what city. Because I don't stay here. Amen. I leave here. And I go out. And I be the church and the community. Now people know I'm the pastor of Central United Methodist Church. But they also know me as the pastor who don't attend here. Amen. And that's the way it should be with all of us. We need to go out. And when people look at your lives. And people hear what you say. And people see what you do. They should know right away. That you are a child of God. That you represent the living Lord Jesus Christ. In this world. You know when I was in the hospital. The only thing I. Oh, I could only think of two things. One was I want to get back to Central United Methodist Church. And the other is I want to drive my car. Don't ask me why I wanted to drive so bad, but I did. And the doctor wanted me to drive my car after two weeks. Ah. You said cards? Remember the big card you made? And that card had cards inside? You'll never know how that confirmed to me that I belong to a Christian body of people who love me. A Christian body of people who love each other who got together as the body of Christ and ministered to me. You did pastoral care to me. And it made me long all the more to be back here, to be the church, to be out of that hospital room. But I did minister to every nurse and every CA that came in. <laughs> I want you to know that. And one of the nurse, uh, CAs who came in said, this is my last night. This is my last night as a CA. She said, I started a hairstyling thing, and I want you to know I'm volunteering to come to your church and cut people's hair. Cool. How about that? I was coming out of the anesthesia for my surgery, and one of the 
people, I don't remember who it was, but someone, as I was cutting out, said, who are the people you serve? What? Who are the people you serve? Why? Because you talked about them in surgery and all through a country. <laughs> they must have been. They wanted to know who you were. And I told that man who the people I served was and what we did, and he donated a suit to the clothing pantry right there on the spot. We can be the church in the world even when we're unconscious. <laughs> if we love being the church, right? If we love the Lord Jesus Christ and if we're willing to confess our faith, it just can't stay in us. Jesus says that the Holy Spirit fills us like living water and it flows from us. It can't stay with us. You get filled with the Holy Spirit, you try to hold it. I dare you this week. Do it. Come, Holy Spirit, fill me. Fill me this day, God. Fill me to overflowing. Fill me, God, so that as you come forth from me, I touch every single person I meet. It's what you say, is what you do, that people will see, and they will know you're a Christian or they won't. Amen? As the Holy Spirit flows from us, and as we be the church in the community. Because I'll tell you, the world needs the church. The world needs us. Even though churches are closing, and not just Methodist churches, even though the church seems to be struggling right now to hang on and, and to be the ministry, even though all these slogans out there about if we do it, we'll save the church doing the only way we're going to save the church is not with a fancy program, it's not with a fancy slogan, the only way that we will save the church is to be the church, to be it, to live it in our lives. So that the church is out there in the world doing what Jesus said, go and make disciples. And the theme of the church, the Methodist church, is to go and make new disciples for the transformation of the world. I think of Charlottesville, and I think of what happened across these, where was it? Um, in, in Spain, Barcelona. Fills me with deep sadness. Deep, deep sadness. God does not need us in the pews. God needs us in Charlottesville. God needs the church in Barcelona. God needs the church wherever Al Qaeda and the rest of the terrorist groups reside. We must be the church. It's one thing to see terrorism and shake your head. It's one thing to see white supremacy and to shake your head. Isn't that too bad? It's one thing to see senior citizens isolated because they're discriminated against their age. Or women discriminated because of their gender. Right? And they can't earn the same salary as a man who does the same job. It's oppression. Do you understand that? There's a fundamental lack of justice that the powerful act upon those who are weak. We as the church must stand in that mist and say, it won't go with us. We are the people of God. And we will work for justice. And we'll work for mercy. And we'll work for grace. And we'll do those things that God has called us to do through the scripture which we read in church on Sunday. And that we study during the week. We must be the church. If we don't, maybe Philip Larkin's spirit will visit this church and say, this is a church going. The bishop recently attended this church. He came here and he looked at all of our ministries. And he proclaimed that this is a church where something's going on. And we can't rest on that. We can't simply say, we've done our job and that's it. We must show energy for the ministry here. All of us, all of us must have an energy for the ministry here. Think of all the things that you give your energy to. I watched the Chiefs game last night. 
I expended a lot of energy in the first and second quarters before I went to bed. Amen? I was there rooting for every pass and every run. The Chiefs did well, didn't they? They did well. If I can extend that kind of energy for the Kansas City Chiefs, I ought to be able to extend it for Jesus Christ and more. Yes? Yes. I expend my energy doing so many things. I love my yard work. I get out in the yard. I mow my grass. Don't tell my neurosurgeon. <laughs> I tend my flowers. I want to plant mums next. I want to get out there. I have to sit. You hear me? And plant those mums. If I can extend that much energy against my neurosurgeon's orders and plant mums, why can't I have that same enthusiasm and that same energy to be the church? What do you expend your energy for? Where does your main energy go to? Can't we give some of it to the Lord? Seriously, can't we? We can, can't we? We can be the church. We can give energy to the ministry of the church simply by going out and being passionate for God. Passionate for our Lord. I minister that passion. I love the church. I do. Do you know that? I love the church. I love Central United Methodist Church. I love my job. I do. There's nothing in this world that I could do but this. This is what God calls me to. And I tell my students, if you aren't as passionate for the ministry when you've been in it 30 years as you was the first year that you as you were the first year that you were in it, quit. Get out of the church. We need pastors with passion in our pulpits. Passionate for the church. Passionate to make disciples. Passionate to send people into the world for justice and peace and mercy and grace and all the things that Jesus stood for that we're supposed to stand for. We need preachers who will do that. But we need lay people as well who will do that. Amen? I am the church. You are the church. We are the church together. We are the church. Amen? I'm going to change what I last week I did and said, don't go to church, be the church. Changed it for the scriptures. I want you to come to church. Get full. Get knowledge. Get excitement. Be filled with the Spirit. And then you go from here. You expend your energy. You get passionate for Christ. And you be the church. In Jesus' name, amen.